Okay, right now uh, I'm going to talk about heat soak and uh, what is heat soak. So heat soak happens when after you drive driven your car and uh, let's say for quite some time when it's completely warmed up and when you shut off the engine uh, with your hood down, especially with your hood down, the temperature in the engine bay actually rises um, maybe 10 to 15 degrees Celsius more and it stays there stays that, uh, at that temperature for longer before it starts going down so it loses heat very very slowly especially with your hood down right so in order to reduce heat soak one way is to lift up the hood like this so if you lift up the hood it actually cools down a, a lot quicker you can lose uh, turbo temperatures like uh, 20 degrees celsius within 15 minutes Alright, so but the problem is you need to lift this hood up every time after you drive so this um, is not ideal you can't do this every time so one thing that I thought of is trying to switch on some kind of fan with a temperature sensor but uh, first we talk about what is affected by heat soak the battery is affected number one because uh, batteries in uh, Malaysia don't last very long they usually last about two to three years maximum but if you read American forums their batteries over there in the colder climates last for like six years All right so battery is one victim and then you have shorter hose life shorter rubber hoses life shorter plastic life um, shorter coil coil and plug life or uh, spark plug wires distributor and uh, your power steering components right all your brake booster and uh, so on so forth, so forth so all these things um, get a shorter life because of heat soap and the hottest component over here is the turbo i've measured 133 degrees celsius after shut off and on the hot side of the turbo right so the cold side is about 100 celsius so there's some difference over there so my plan is to create a system where i can turn a fan on and uh, have the same or better cooling effect than lifting the hood at, the target is at least have the same capacity to remove the heat from the engine bay while the hood is open Okay, so right now we got, I'm gonna have also uh, gonna run three experiments. One is with the engine bay down, uh, I mean with the hood down, um, and just see how long the temperature takes to reach the target temperature without turning the fans on. And then next is to turn on the uh, let the fan turn on and see how fast it cools down. And then one more, we turn off the fan and we leave the hood and see. Uh, how long it takes to get to the target temperature of 55 celsius all right so we the target is again i repeat same or a shorter time to cool with the hood down okay i'm going to, i've devised a plan on uh, how to make the system so i've drawn a simple circuit um, this uh, one thing uh, to note is uh, I really suck at electric electrics and electronics, so I need to double check and triple check a few times to see that uh, to make sure that I've done it correctly. So that's why I draw it like this, just to give an idea. So if you need to look at the diagram uh, in detail, you can just pause the video and uh, have a look at it. All right. So I'm gonna have. Um, two controller one controller over here which is a remote control one and it will look like this so there's a uh, five pins i can uh, screw in five wire connections but we're going to use four only right this is a remote control relay so when i press this uh, a toggle switch a it will turn on and b it will turn off so this will always be on standby right so it will be here on the left side and this is a casing that I draw myself in, in uh, SOLIDWORKS and uh, 3D print it and this is the temperature controller alright the temperature controller with the double display one is showing the 
uh, actual temperature and one showing the target temperature right so it'll be here so you can see here there's four pins over here in negative in positive k1 and k0 i've marked all these over here right so what the plan what's my plan is uh, i'm going to take this positive and negative from the radio harness adapter not from the actual harness but from the adapter i used for my aftermarket market radio and this is always live live positive negative as long as your battery is con still there it's connected it will be, you have power over here i didn't draw the connection here because it's understood that it's going through the loom to this harness over here so i'm going to make a use a small connector over here uh, this kind of uh, connector or stick out connector small one all right so i'm going to positive negative join to positive negative 20 gauge wire and this will go below the steering column all right and this positive negative will reach inside the steering column in, into this uh, housing that i've made and the positive will go to this part of the switch holder fuse holder so i'm going to use a 1 amp fuse over here because this system should only take very low amp amperage so one positive will go here and the other positive will be here shown over here and it will go to this switch one of the pins of the switch over here all right and in another positive will go from this uh, pin over here out to the input voltage of the remote unit all right so it should be voltage in this one all right so why do i have so many switches over here and why do i have a fuse this is for safety to protect this against short circuit all right and also the wiring loom against short circuit this is already protected by the radio fuse 7.5 amp but this is just further protection for this all right in case any wires come out and uh, short circuit somewhere else and this is for me to turn off the power to this system which will turn off to this also just in case i want to swap this thing out i can just turn off the power or pull out the fuse so it's safer so from here also this negative will go direct to this negative here it should be here right this pin look behind here negative positive all right so negative go here and this negative i need to branch out to another negative that will go to the temp controller it shares the same negative here right okay, so blue okay so that's all for the negative one here and one here branch out same negative same ground right then for this part here this neg uh, positive i need to branch out to com com is a common which is here you can see com is center over here i need to branch out right this will go through the relay i mean if the relay turns on it will uh, give out the voltage from no which is normally open see that normally open no so this no wire i need to go to this positive input on the temp controller because this is sending power to, to this system all right without this turning on this will not turn on that's the idea all right so then from this positive i'll branch out to k1 you can see k1 over here branch out positive to k1 right i haven't done it yet i need to, I need to branch out and then this k0 is coming after the relay this relay turns on right this relay turns on then it will transmit power to k0 this will turn on the fans all right so this will go to the other switch i have over here all right so why do i put a switch here so that i can turn off the fans if i want to without turning on this turning off the system i can still measure the temperature but uh, if the relay turn on it won't switch the fan sometimes i don't want to switch the fan all right so you want the fan on i just turn this on right i leave it on most of the time so this positive wire i will use the yellow color cable and it will go back here and through the housing and go out to the engine firewall this is inside the cabin right got engine firewall through a grommet and then the temperature probe which is this one shown here temperature probe will also go out through this uh, opening here and go out through the grommet 
this is to measure the temperature right and it will be placed above the turbo so I can measure the air around the turbo which is the hottest uh, temperature in the engine bay right hottest um, component in the engine bay okay so next I'm okay I haven't finished here hang on yeah I finished here so there'll be four four wires going through this opening here one is the positive the negative going in and going out we have the power cable for the to for the fan outside and the temperature probe all right so we can do this system first the inside the car first get it ready and then this wire we can just um, let it hang outside safely without uh, short circuiting anything all right and we put our four pin relay high power relay this four pin relay pin 86 is go to the head of the relay which is coming from the temperature controller all right and pin 85 is ground you can find any ground all right on the chassis and this is 12 volt battery i'm going to tap in tap the power from the uh, positive side and put a 7.5 amp fuse which goes to pin 30 which is the high power area of the relay pin 30 87 is high power so 87 is going to be a positive cable going all the way with a very long cable which will go to the three fans i have um, fans are 1.85 amp fans 12 volt computer fans these are quite powerful so there's a positive negative here um, you can see from here that there's a ground so this negative will go to the best ground position that's nearby this fan and this positive will join back to this positive wire that is coming from pin 87 so there will be three splits this is a parallel wiring one two three fans the total current should be under 6 amps so i'm going to use 7.5 amp fuse should be safe right so each fan needs to have its own ground uh, so once you've done all this it should very safely um, control these fans until the temperature goes down to the set temperature and uh, we will cut off the system and then this system will this system will stay on until I turn it off with the remote because I don't want to keep opening the door and uh, turning off the switch so one way is I do it is to use this I can uh, off the power to this controller by remote I don't have to open the door all right all right so next thing is I'm going to build the casing and, sh and show you how the wiring is done uh, I'm going to do all this area over here until here and then we'll move on uh, to the next to the outside okay uh, my 3d printer parts have arrived and uh, so everything seems to fit so as you can see I've insert the switches over here and it clips in nicely the torrents are perfect it's a bit tight just nice and uh, this is where the fuse holder will sit and once screw in it will be quite secure all right and then this is where the temperature sensor will sit there's four holes here i'll screw in screw in and then this is where the remote control uh, switch will sit and uh, I made a little holder for the remote control circuit right so once I screw this in here it can't move around and now I need to do the wiring I'll do the wiring outside first and uh, route it properly and then I screw this in, all in so okay I'm gonna proceed with this now okay I've just uh, completed wiring up the system it took me about three hours work uh, I had to use the soldering iron uh, Americans you Americans call it solder so I pronounce it as solder anyway uh, I used 20 gauge wires for most of the wiring job here but the only one 16 gauge is uh, the wire going out to the cabin of the car that's to the engine bay so anyway I will explain uh, this box over here I designed this box in SolidWorks to place the remote relay here and the temp control uh, relay over here um, so we start with the positive wire which I soldered to this uh, XT30 RC car connector 
So the positive and negative, this will come from radio harness, which is live, right? Uh, so it goes in positive, goes in through this hole over here, and positive goes to this fuse holder over here, one leg of fuse holder. So this fuse will complete the circuit to the other leg of the fuse holder, and I solder another wire, positive wire, which goes through to this uh, switch over here. This switch, uh, the quality of the points seems to be quite good because I don't have to send paper the the connection at all. I just solder it and it sticks perfectly. So the positive goes to here from the, the fuse, and then this positive from the switch on the other leg goes to the positive in of the remote control relay, and then I branch the positive in positive in here to the com which is here it's a branch okay same uh, lead and all this solder back to this part of the switch here right or the upper part of the switch here so the positive is connected to here positive in and com all right next we have the negative wire here which goes to the uh, xt30 connector right negative wire goes here and then there's a branch i've soldered inside here goes from the back all right you can see the negative the black one it goes through the hole and it goes touches with this negative over here right the negative is shared right so next the positive for the normally open on this relay normally open the positive is uh, go in here and come down Come down back here, you see it, and it goes back up through here, and it and I made a branch over here, a branch from positive in to K zero K one on the temp temp uh, control relay, right? K one is a bridge, and this is both connected to the normally open over here, right? So what happens is when I press the remote control button, the relay will send uh, twelve volts from this normally open it become closed all right and it send the power to this circuit here so you will activate this system and the power will also go to here as a standby all right and then finally this k0 over here you can see k0 is powered by the relay here and this positive i solder through here to the switch over here you can see the red wire all right so why i do this is so that i can turn off the fence if i want to right and then finally the 16 gauge wire all right i solder to the other pin of the uh, switch and it comes in through here and goes out so and then we have also the sensor wires sensor connector and the sensor wire probe for it going through this uh, um, conduit all right and so there's four wires here one is the positive negative which is coming coming in supplying power to both circuits and next we have the uh, positive coming out from the temp control relay which will go to the engine bay to activate the four pin relay the high power four pin relay right and the last cable is the sensor temperature cable uh, which is this sensor temperature cable which will go also to the engine bay and measure the temperature on the uh, over the turbo right so have a close look on how i secure there's a secure the um, relays so this one is using four screws which is uh, provided on the i mean the screw holes are provided on this board but I have to buy my own screws M2.5 4 mm length and this one don't, doesn't use screw to there's no screw holes at all so I had no choice but to engineer an L shaped uh, stub over here and I, I made a stopper over here using a screw right it bolts to the uh, base at the bottom so this stops the relay from moving around this is quite uh, sturdy now and I'm going to put this cover on later this cover will allow me to see the display and 
do the setting for the temp relay and this will see whether the remote control is working or not and I can do the setting on the remote control also alright so this box is designed especially for my car if you want I can share with you the 3d uh, STL file so you can uh, get the idea on how to make one of your own alright and this uh, switch is uh, the tolerance for the switch is perfect to go in alright so next is uh, I'm going to test uh, test this system with a 12 volt power supply and see if it works if it works then uh, I can go ahead and wire it into the car okay I've connected up the uh, 12 volt power supply you can see the power supply is on and the positive is connected to the positive on this connector and the negative is connected to the negative of the power supply all right positive negative from power supply and now the system is powered up all the switches are on so now this is the remote I turn it on it's working all right turn it off on off all right so we now know this system is work working so I uh, can install it to the uh, car uh, first I'm going to connect the uh, positive and negative to the, the other connector um, this other connector so I can wire it into the car All right. so running the test now on the system uh, I put the probe above the soldering iron it's not really touching it's just above it and I turn it on so when the temperature reaches the target I'm going to check the uh, power coming out from the relay which is the yellow positive and I'm going to put the, the multimeter on here, the positive here, and the negative on here. This negative over here. And we see whether we have 12 volts coming out there. If it does, when it reaches 45 degrees Celsius, it has 12 volts, then it's okay. The system works. Okay, here we are finally at the car. And this is the complete system with the uh, top side cover to cover the electronics inside. I call it the heat soap defensor. Basically, in a tradition of wacky English names, JDM parts like the speed cut defensor, speed limit defensor. So I name it heat soap defensor. All right. So this uh, cover is spe specially designed for this car. I'm going to put it over here, right uh, to the right side of the steering wheel. Why I choose this area? Because um, it doesn't block any other parts that I'll need to remove next time let's say I need to remove this um, panel over here I don't have to remove this system and I this cover underneath here also it doesn't interfere with that I can remove this cover right so it'll be placed over here and I'm gonna route the wire inside here right and I'm using the uh, cable uh, conduit like this to cover the wires it's good all right so what I need to do now I need to open this cover this trim cover so I can access the inside One, um, then uh, I need to open this center console the, this console so I need to take it off for the um, automatic transmission this cover and the radio I need to pull out the radio so now I'm going to get to work doing this okay I've removed the console but I haven't removed uh, this cover over here yet but anyway um, this is the original loom from the uh, chassis and this is the adapter to go to the Kenwood player and it looks like I have already uh, labeled each cable so this is the negative ground and this is the positive from battery this is live so I need these two I need to connect the positive and then the negative to the XT30 connector and solder to this thing so I'm just going to uh, I actually disconnected the battery so now I'm going to put back the battery and then uh, double check whether I have the, the wires are correct. They're correct. I remove this connector and solder the um, XT30 connector to these two wires. Alright, um, I've uh, confirmed that the wiring is correct. So now I'm going to solder this XT30 connector. I'm going to use the, since this is live, I'm going to use a female connector. So I've soldered the positive to the positive side. And now I'm going to heat shrink it over here. And I'm gonna proceed the negative and then solder to this connector. Okay, it's soldered on. So now I'm gonna uh, proceed to cut the wire. So I don't want it to be too long and uh, join to this uh, adapter. Okay, this is the connector ready to be soldered. Um, I've decided not to cut any wire off this adapter. Instead, I've 
um, pull out this pin over here and when there's a lot of space at the back here so I'm going to solder direct to the back here probably need to send paper a bit this uh, surface and then I solder the this positive to this battery positive here and switch string over here it's much easier than cutting another wire so to remove the pin from the connector you need to pry open pry the plastic tab inside there you'll figure it out all right okay I've soldered the positive lid to over here I had the sandpaper a bit the surface but it sticks perfectly so now I'm going to put heat string over it over it and uh, I can put back the connector and then proceed to the negative so I'm done with the soldering to the connector so later when I put this uh, plug back and I uh, inside the car and I put back the battery on connect back the battery I'm going to measure the positive negative from this adapter not from here because this is quite deep down and I'm not sure that uh, when I put the multimeter probe here that I might actually connect both pins and cause a short circuit so I'm going to use this end here that's nearer to me and I can carefully put the probe in here and measure the voltage if I get positive I put positive and negative here and I get uh, about 12 volts that means the polarity is correct and its connection is correct then I can proceed with the um, routing the wire properly with the cable trunking and uh, putting the system in place okay I uh, plug back the connector to the loom from the chassis for the radio this is for the speaker and this is for the main power all right so now I'm gonna measure uh, plug back the battery and measure the voltage from here positive negative make sure making sure I don't touch the multimeter probe to both pins all right be careful here if I got about 12 volts here that means I the job is done correctly then I can proceed to uh, route the wire inside here okay I've connected the uh, um, adapter and as you can see the new XT30 connectors there with a cable conduit going through one of this hole over here and this hole comes out on this side under the steering column all right it goes I use the cable tie holder over here, under here right to hold the conduit and it goes behind the uh, lap uh, aircon right a aircon duct and over here so this will power the system and now I'm going to put this here stick it over here and I can connect this to here and we can have power to the system next I need to route uh, the sensor and the sensor and the um, power relay power outside of the, of the chassis to the engine bay okay I place the system with double sided tape 3M double sided tape right and it's in place now the wire going through the trunking and I uh, use some cable ties to hold it here All right with a cable tie holder taped in I'm gonna need to cut this All right so now the connector is in place here the XT30 now I have to pull these two wires through the wall over here inside there there should be a grommet there near the heater and I'm gonna pull it out through there these two wires and uh, right then after that I can put back everything okay uh, I'm having great difficulty trying to locate the location of this uh, um, grommet over here from inside so I use small uh, metal wire that I bought from Daiso 0 0.1 millimeter diameter so I managed to push it in and uh, I can see it from inside so this is where I'm going to ride the cable on I'm going to tie it to this uh, wire and pull it out through the grommet right and as you go down here you can see you can see the wire showing up there you see that so that's where the wire is coming in I'm gonna tie the yellow cable to that to this uh, wire and pull it out okay looks like the previous method is a failure when I tried to pull the wire through it got stuck and uh, it slipped off because the cable tie was too big so I tried another method now I use the unwanted wire very long one I poke it through here um, let it come out through the hole all right and I solder end to end over here so now I'm going to pull the yellow wire out through that hole this should work 
Okay, I've managed to pull out the uh, power cable from the relay. Alright, and it's going that side. I'm going to have to put a trunking for it, protect it, and the temperature probe wire is here, going behind this uh, brake booster shield. And I will find a good place to position this above the turbo shield. It, it won't be touching the shield, but it will be above it. Very close, somewhere here, right? So to measure the air temperature over here. Uh, then on the inside, make sure that you have enough slack on the cables here, right? It's not too tight. And here, so I'm going to put a cable trunking to protect it until the uh, grommet inside there, all right? Okay, I've uh, done the trunking that is going from the uh, relay and the temperature probe go all the way to the exit here and I tie it to the steering uh, shaft over here all right and it goes all the way out there and at least it affords some protection and uh, you know where the wire is going to so now the inside is done I'm gonna put back all the trims and uh, check if the system turns on all right so put back the radio and uh, put back all the trims Let's have a look another time. Alright. Okay, I've connected back the battery. You can see all the power is coming on. So now, right, turn on the, rem the remote. The system is turning on. The temperature in the engine bay is 35.7 where the sensor is. So it's working. As you can see, this, this light over here showing that the relay for the remote is on all right so I press it again off on off on okay now let's say i turn off this switch over here zero it won't turn on okay because i cut the power turn it on it's on all right so everything works now uh, i can put everything back together and put with the radio on and see if this works Okay, I've connected back the radio and the system can work with the radio on, so there's no issue. It's working. Off, on, off, on. Okay, I've finally done the trunking for the uh, power cable that will activate the relay to the fan. So it's going here, and as you can see, I can I solder it, solder the uh, the connector here, and leave it like that. It's, it's safe because it won't contact anything. And I've cable tied all this in place. And don't forget, you need to tape the trunking, otherwise it'll open up and the wires will come out. You can see the wires a little exposed there, but never mind because it cannot come out since I taped it up. All right, and don't forget to put some silicone on the grommet over here where the wires are coming out we don't want any water coming in so the next step is I'm gonna leave this here first with this uh, temperature sensor over here like that uh, I will see if I'm getting a good hot reading and the next round I'll be installing the brackets and the fuse and the relay and the fans so the fans will be, one fan will be here all right in front of the turbo and distributor one fan will be below here sucking cooler air, cool air from the bottom and one fan will be here blowing out the hot air through this little opening over here right okay i finally got my uh, stainless steel brackets that i designed made up and uh, this is for the um, left side of the engine bay this is to uh, exhaust the uh, hot air out of the engine bay and this is to suck from the cool air from below this will mounted to the turbo turbo um, housing all right so this will suck cool air and blow the hot air away from the turbo to upwards and this is will be in front of the power steering pump and this will push the air uh, cool the distributor and the turbo <coughs> and push the air to the rearwards um, where it will converge with this fan uh, the flow of this uh, air over here and go upwards and this one will suck it out okay so now I'm going to proceed to uh, install everything. I have everything ready here. 
uh, yeah, gotta work on it. Alright, after many hours of uh, soldering wires and uh, routing wires, so finally I'm almost done. I have all three brackets in. This is the exhaust bracket, and uh, the relay is here, and the fuse is here. I haven't put in the fuse, so I'll run through the wiring with you now. This is the 4 pin relay, so according to my diagram, pin 30 will go to the uh, fuse holder okay so this fuse holder will go to the positive of the battery positive battery fuse holder and it routes to uh, here the where is it uh, to the blue one yes here this blue color one is a uh, pin 30 all right so it comes from the fuse holder to the battery so this is what powering the fan and this red color cable is pin 87 which will go to the three fans right so you can see here I branch out to the positive of the fan and this negative is the ground of this fan and also the uh, relay which is pin 85 this is pin 85 of the relay right and then uh, pin 86 goes to the controller the positive from inside the relay inside the car with the temperature controller okay and uh, this is the red one this goes to the fans so i pull this down here and it goes all the way underneath the intercooler you can see why why do i put it here all right i put it here because it's a cooler place if the temperature isn't hot so the resistance will be won't be high and it goes all the way through here to this conduit over here i'm gonna put uh, make a split in the conduit right so this branch here for the positive and the last branch for this positive for so this one will connect to this fan here which is in front of the power steering and this will connect at the exhaust bracket at the exhaust here right which will suck cool air from bottom and blow away the hot air to the top here and which will be that that fan there will have will create a low pressure area so all this air hot air that's being pushed out up here all right on this heat insulation will be sucked that side so there will be continuous movement of air cold air replacing hot air and because of that all this cooler air moving above all these hot areas that it will lose the heat very quickly all right so now i'm going to um, make a split in here and uh, tuck this all properly okay the uh, positive cable from the relay this is connected to pin 87 on the relay so this is now all connected this is the positive to this fan and this is the positive to that fan there and this is the ground for the, that fan down there and this ground uh, where's the ground uh, here this ground here is for this fan okay so now i'm going to heat up the probe the probe is uh, on top of the heat here where is that thing yeah right here you see that that's the probe i'm going to use a hair dryer and heat it up and uh, Turn the system on, see at 45 deg uh, degrees and over, the fan is supposed to turn on, right? Oh yeah, I need to put in the fuse. So I'm going to try to put a 5M fuse first. If it's not enough, then I put 7.5. The uh, fan is almost 2 amps, so it's supposed to be 6 amps. <clears throat> but I'm just, just going to try 5 amps, see if uh, the fuse pops or not. If it doesn't pop, then I can continue using 5 amps. I have turned the system on, as you can see from here, the measured temperature is 35.1 celsius on top of the head and the target temperature is 45 and as you can see the fans are now not running so i'm going to use the hair dryer and uh, blow heated air on the sensor and uh, until it turns on the temperature sensor has detected high temperature above 45 so this fan is now turning all three fans are turning can feel the air over here it's not very strong but it's moving with the hood closed definitely the air will be moving and this is not well this is okay this is quite strong so this will kick out the air here okay i can feel it coming out here so this should exhaust the hot air out right so the theory is how the hot air will come up rise skirt over here and be sucked out there okay this will blow the turbo over here yeah this is quite strong all right we reached the uh, 45 degrees celsius so it turn off 
Okay, after running the system for some time, I've noticed a few problems. Uh, number one is if you notice uh, the bracket earlier, this bracket was completely straight like this. So what happened was the air was blowing this way really strongly, uh, which is what I wanted. But what I didn't want was the hot air was going here along this channel and going through here and heating up this uh, bottom of the windscreen glass over here. And uh, it was quite hot actually. This part was about 45 degrees Celsius and this part is like 29. So I was worried that it would in induce uh, um, thermal stress on the glass and it will crack the glass. So I tried to angle, cut off this bracket a bit and angle it. You can, as you can see, there's some angle over here to direct the air this way, but it's still not enough. Still, there was some hot air coming this way and uh, heating up the glass. So actually, after I angled it this way, the, I noticed that the hot air isn't really coming from here, not that much from here, because it's not this area that's being heated up, it's this area. So then I noticed that there's this drainage hole sir, here. So what happened is this fan is blowing straight up into this uh, drainage hole and then the air is going, the hot air is going through here and coming out through this hinge here and it's heating up the glass over right here, right? So now I uh, made a deflector out of uh, this is a plastic uh, cut. I, I don't know whether it will hold up for long term, but I'm doing this temporarily just to to um, check the fitment. As you can see, I make some cutting here so that it will clear the strut hood hood strut over here, so it won't touch. And then when I close the hood, it won't touch with this also. So now the plan is to deflect the air this way and this way. So there'll be minimal air going into this hole over here and minimal air going this way right so i want to reduce the hot air going here and uh, heating up the glass i don't know yet how well this will work so i'll try this on monday it's saturday today and let's see how it goes and uh, so far the uh, system works very well uh, i can feel that the fender and the hood is getting cooler getting cool uh, maybe after half an hour instead of uh, Previously it was like hot for more than an hour, so the system works, and uh, I'll explain to you why I changed the set temperature to a higher temperature. I'll draw some graphs and show you. Okay, here I'm gonna explain uh, why I chose uh, a certain temperature to cut off the uh, fans. Okay, so and also uh, why I changed the location. So initially, uh, if you look at the video in the earlier parts, uh, I said I wanted to measure on the turbo shield. So what happened was, uh, when upon shutting down the engine, the turbo shield temperature was about 90 something Celsius. And upon shutting down, the temperature went up very quickly to over 120 Celsius within a minute. So the problem with this is the system that the temperature sensor that I bought cannot detect, um, cannot work beyond 120 degrees Celsius. So what happens is the system will shut off. It will stay on, but it will not activate the relay. It will show an error. And then even though the temperature drops below 120, and it will show that, it will not turn on the relay. So this is a flaw with the system. So I have no choice but to find somewhere else to uh, measure the temperature from so but anyway even if i put on the turbo uh, uh, turbo shield the temperature on the turbo shield actually goes down much more quickly than the cylinder head uh, so i'm not too worried about the turbo temperature actually um uh, so i decided to put on the cylinder head right right on top cylinder head and where the spark plug wires are sitting so since we want the electrical parts to last longer all right and the rubber parts so I measured on the cylinder head. Okay, so the graph here shows that uh, this plot line here shows the temperature uh, from um, peak temperature which is about 90 Celsius and it goes down naturally with the hood closed. As you can see, this is the time on the graph, this temperature. So it goes down for, and this is the ambient temperature. It, it takes a very, very long time for it to equal, equalize to ambient temperature of let's say 32 Celsius, all right? Uh, so with the fans, I found that it shortened, basically shortens the graph over here. So at 45 degrees Celsius, 
I managed to shorten the uh, time to somewhere about one hour and a half. But the problem with this is um, to get it to 45 degrees is a struggle. And one more running the fence more than one hour is not ideal because it drains the battery. So what I need to do is uh, I try to increase this temperature little by little, not too high. I want to find a happy medium where we get to lower the temperature uh, on the cylinder head and, and, and engine bay and not drain the batteries for too much, not run the fans too long also. So I'm going to play with this temperature and uh, right now I believe it's about 53 to 55 Celsius. I think that's okay. That's a good temperature which will not damage the uh, uh, electrical wires and the components and won't damage the uh, spark plug cables either. So I will not go higher than 58 Celsius. I will experiment with this uh, temperature, all right, and um, find a happy medium. Yeah. So the target is maybe just one hour or a little over one hour. Uh, so yeah, I will test this, and uh, since I've done the def uh, deflector for the air on the exhaust side, so, um, I will test it again and see. I've set the temperature 53, and let's see how long it takes to shut off the fans. Okay, uh, right now the system is uh, very close to uh, the set temperature. I've left the hood closed after a long drive. It was peaking at 85.5 Celsius. It's now more than one and a half hour and it's very close to the set temperature of 55. Okay, you can hear that it's suddenly quiet because uh, he's reached the set temperature and the fans are, have all turned off but this is not the end of it if uh, you pay attention here now what happened is because the fan has stopped working but the, the engine block is still releasing the heat so you notice that the temperature is creeping up again so this um, and then this the temperature controller has a default uh, temp to restart at 2 degrees above the set temperature so that means it will restart at 57 celsius the fans will turn on again until it goes down 55 and then it will turn off the fan so this will happen a few more times it's not going to be just like uh, one time and then it reaches 55 and that's it it will keep releasing the heat and then the fans will turn on again and the, the air will carry the force convection will carry away the heat and the temperature drop again and then it shut off so this is normal this is bound to happen all right so now as you can see it's creeping up uh the relay is off you can see that there's a red light over here right and now there's no red light that means the relay is off it's now creeping up to 56.4 you can see slowly it's going up and at 57 you watch the uh, temp controller turn on Alright, pay attention to the sound, the red light and the sound. Now it's quiet. Okay, hear that? Alright, you saw the red light. I mean the relay is turned on. So now uh the fans will attempt to cool down again to 55 celsius and you will probably go down quite soon you can see it's going down as soon as the flow of air eh? so as i said earlier it's going to happen a few times because there's latent heat it's still trapped inside and this will get rid of the heat and until there will come a point maybe three or four times then uh, it will stop altogether when the then it will start to drop below 55 Continuing this same cycle earlier, uh, look at how much the airflow is helping. You see that? It's dropping.
that's false convection for you. Okay, I'm glad to report to it the final iteration of this fan bracket. As you can see, I have changed the angle uh, differently. It's more upright now and it's also facing more forward but still blowing towards the side. So now with this uh, angle, uh, it's not touching the hood when I close it. It's still low and the best part is uh, there's minimal air going back here. Very little, it's only like um, heat waves going out that way. Most of it is coming out here and going out through the grill over here. All right. So this is my final design. I'm going to keep with it. I might do some minor improvements in the future. But right now, uh, it's working as it is. So right now, I can say the project is, is a success. Um, yeah. So you can replicate this on, in, on your engine bay if you want to. Uh, open out. Okay. Uh, this morning, it, I turned the system on at 8.11. It's now 8.31. So it's on for 20 minutes and the temperature peaked uh, when it started off it peaked uh, about a few minutes later it peaked at 84.5 mm now it's at 76.7 after 20 minutes so the system definitely works it uh, there's no way the temperature will come down this quick uh, just by uh, letting convection take it take uh, do its job so yeah, this is definitely a good system. Okay, this is the latest iteration of the exhaust fan. Uh, this is the only area so far that I'm not very happy with because uh, previously without this uh, shroud over here, the hot air, some of it is going out but a lot of it is being circulated back here and it's blowing very strongly to the engine wall over there and going out the windscreen so now I have worked out a air duct over here for the fan 3D printed with a two and a half inch hose I thought it wouldn't fit but it fits actually just nice over here and I had to move the relay over here right and stuck underneath the hood it's not touching um, and this will direct all the hot air instead of recirculating it will direct the hot air out here Hopefully that the hot air will not go here and to the windscreen. So I will need to test this out. Hopefully this is the final uh, iteration of the exhaust side. And if this works then uh, that's it. I don't have to do anything anymore. I can just keep running the system.